Cultural Center. It's an organization for cultural and civil society. And lately, in the last years, we have been more and more involving into political activeness and, uh, and also now with the refugee crisis and, and the war in Ukraine, we have started this project, Kolo, which is aimed to uh, give some opportunities and meet up with the Ukrainian creatives. We are not a social or like psychological uh, uh, organization, so we find some challenges in not knowing actually how to deal with this crisis because it's something new also for us. But nevertheless, we are trying and we are seeing this, this importance of our job while just listening, getting to know these people and, and, and understanding that this war influences all of us in all Europe. Uh, so the Color Project has uh, maybe like two spheres, main branches, is online support that we have like a group chat where people, yeah, we have like the main source of information and where people can talk and for example search for uh, people to collaborate or just share their views. Uh, and another one is meetings and we have a meeting every Saturday for a month. Uh, and every Saturday we meet uh, as a group, as a kolo, as a circle, because kolo in Ukrainian means circle. Uh, and so we meet, talk uh, about random things, but also about these art projects and the art initiatives that people have. And now we have, for example, a cinema group that work, wants to work on social uh, videos about make people aware of that war is still going on and uh, do not judge refugees. So we think that we can shoot some video and um, this volunteers program would help us. Uh, uh, they like our um, idea, so we now we speak about uh, script and maybe in January we start uh, to shoot it. Uh, and we want to um, privilege in involve uh, uh, so media uh, media person from Latvia uh, because we, we uh, the biggest idea of our video is that um, uh, people from Latvia um, must try to understand us and uh, people of Europe must try to understand us that we really want to work on our position we don't want to work uh, I don't know in a restaurant or with something else. Uh, because uh, we are all individual and we have normal life before the war and we want to stay in this life but small part but very important part of us it's our career and our work another one we have performers uh, who think about very like interesting project somehow is uh, exhibition but also immersive exhibition so it's going to be like a participatory thing and yeah so we usually come discuss talk share the idea, so it's just the circle of support. So, this is our poster, our open call for how we try to find Ukrainian creatives. And so the design of uh, the project, the branding and this poster was created and made by a designer from Ukraine. Ksenia uh, Malakiyatova, she's an artist, and also the uh, the brand in itself is color, it's, uh, it's handwritten, it's like repeating of the circles, so it's very like, appealing to people. There are many organizations who have, uh, I, maybe almost all cultural organizations who are been working and making events this year, they have been participating and inviting Ukrainian uh, issue and Ukrainian artists into their practice. Uh, but there is a one big difference is that we are talking about two different target groups because one target group is Latvians who need to be aware of the situation what is happening in Ukraine and that doesn't mean that these same events would be fitting for the Ukrainian refugee community because they have completely different needs they are living post-traumatic uh, experience their relatives are there, they need to think and, and, and care of, of themselves in a new environment. So both communities are still searching the ways what 
they need to get and 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 in a way like I think this the cinema nights what we are organizing is is making this bridge between these two cultures because even if we are so close the cultural historical experience is different and now uh, the world uh, very tired because war is uh, not easy and uh, a lot of people don't watch a lot of video about uh, war about uh, some picture from hot point because uh, people tired and we uh, but we, and we we must to find a new a way how to speak about uh, our problem and about war and about the uh, problem of refugees. But what can I say is like uh, Ukrainians as refugees don't really like to be a refugee. They want to be a normal person and I know that there are some struggles of finding a place to live uh, because also prices went up because of the crisis and yes that's why it's really now hard for people economically here. But I know that Latvians do a lot of support. Uh, there are several centers for Ukrainian refugees. There are some events for them. There are free public transport for Ukrainians. There are free entrance at museums. So, uh, of course, it's not easy to live here uh, as a refugee, but I think with what resources Latvia ha has, not really that bad support. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that I perceive a stigma in my bubble or in the cultural bubble. Yes, of course, there is a big influence of Russian Federation's propaganda in order to make this separation between Latvians and, and Russian-speaking Latvians and Ukrainians and Russian-speaking Ukrainians, but I hope that we by these small actions and by these projects we are doing, we can eliminate that stigma. In this color project that we have right now, the solidarity is actually the point, like one of the milestones, uh, because there is solidarity of Latvian people with Ukrainians who really want to support them uh, and really try to do everything that they can and resources they have to collaborate, to support and to make their life a bit brighter <laughs> because uh, yeah, it's a bit warmer uh, than it is without this community. But for me, solidarity has always been uh, a point that you can't be, uh, you don't, you cannot afford yourself to be, uh, not to care about anybody else. So. For, and especially now, after the like big invasion of Ukraine, uh, of Russia and Ukraine, but it's a big work on yourself to, to feel the solidarity and to not just feel it, but also express and do something. Either report on Twitter or Instagram, or really go into demonstrations and then uh, I don't know, collecting all the clothes, the warm clothes, and sending it to Ukraine or. Solidarity is really necessary to understand that we are, like kind of the world is one and that we will never be able to live in peace and, and harmony if there wouldn't be, if there is at least one place where people are dying without a reason. And that's what exactly is happening in, uh, in Ukraine. So I think it's, it's crucial for all of the societies to help in a way they can. Of course, if you yourself need a, uh, help, then it's impossible for you to help others. And kind of, this is also like Latvia's situation that like, of course, our help is smaller than maybe in the Western world, but like percentagely out of the GPR, I think we are one of the leaders in European Union of helping Ukraine. So I think, yeah, it's crucial for all of us to, to live on.